He's a miracle-working God. He's a miracle-working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle-working God. See what the Lord has done for me. See what a mighty God he is. See what the Lord has done for me. See what a mighty God he is. Brothers and sisters in Christ, family, friends, anyone within the hearing of my voice, my standing here today is a miracle. In 2001, when I returned from the University of West Indies, Mona, I was forced to see an orthopedic surgeon to deal with a back injury which I was sustained in a motor vehicle accident in 1997, and which had caused me much stress during my studies. In 2003, after having an MRI, the prognosis was not good. I was told by the doctor that there was degeneration going on in my bones, and should it continue at its present rate, I would not be able to walk in six months. My sister had attended the doctor with me. I remember we cried from Belleville to St. Peter where she lived, and then I continued to send Lucy in tears. On arriving home, I spoke with my daughter and told her the news. Her response was, did you speak to your pastor? I replied, no, I will call him. She said, call him? Is he not in office? You better get in that car and go and see him. I said, okay, but made no effort to move. She said, mommy, go and see your pastor. My daughter is a baptized Christian and holds fast to Christian principles and was at a stage in her Christian life that I had not yet reached or understood. I, however, left and went to see my pastor. On reaching the office, I met Sister Mice, now Pastor Mice, and in tears I explained the situation to her. She immediately held me and started to pray. When she was finished, she said, let me take you to my husband. My tears had subsided, so I was better able to explain to Pastor B the situation. When I was finished, he said, that was man's report. Are you willing to believe God's report? I said yes, as a response, not really knowing what to expect. Again, he said, are you willing to believe God's report? And I said yes. A verse I constantly use during university came to me, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Pastor B called Sister Mags and told her to lay hands on me and agree with him. And he started to pray. I really do not know how long they prayed, but I do know that afterwards I felt better and drove home in less discomfort and with a peace. stand for long periods of time. As a result, on Sundays and Fridays when I'm at church, I would sit for the duration of the service. One
on Friday night while at worship and praise, I sat there asking myself, why am I here? When the pain in my back was so bad and all I wanted to do was to go home and sleep. That thought did not last too long, for I soon experienced what had become a turning point for the rest of my life. It was the night God healed me. I opened my eyes and saw Pastor Bullen and Pastor John. Pastor B was praying and Pastor John had his hands on my back. I remembered feeling like heat on my back and as if I was carrying a heavy bag on my back, which I wanted to take off and put down. Pastor B continued to pray and suddenly the weight was gone and I could not understand why my body and my spirit felt so light. Friends, what I did not understand that Friday night was that I was healed by the Holy Spirit. It was a couple of weeks before reality set in. I realized I was no longer taking pain medication because there was no pain. I was no longer taking antidepressants. I wasn't depressed. But more importantly, I wasn't taking any of the other medication. Then reality stepped in. I had been healed. Then one Sunday morning, I went to church and it was raining. And before even realizing, I got up and ran into church. Imagine me who couldn't walk running. It wasn't until pastor was doing his sermon and he was talking about the goodness of God. And he mentioned that he saw me run into the church. And he asked me to run down the church and run back up. And excitement and reality set in. I had been healed. I had no pain. I was able to run. I sat there in my seat and committed myself to God fully and promised to serve him faithfully for the rest of my life. I was able to understand the goodness of God. Folks, this was a big step for me because I came from a Methodist background and had never experienced or understood the fullness of God. In 2020, 17 years later, here I am, still walking, running, exercising, and more importantly, walking in God's grace. I'm a hostess at church, which means a lot of standing when I'm on duty. I'm also on the worship team, which also means a lot of standing. And sometimes, depending on how the Holy Spirit leads, standing for the duration of the service. Friends, can I tell you, my God is awesome, awesome, awesome. My God is awesome. He can move the mountain, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God hid me from the rain of immobility, and I give him thanks. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. I want to publicly thank Pastor Mags, Pastor Bullen, and Pastor John Griffith for guiding me through this miracle and helping me to stand on the promises of God. I'm gracefully broken and I'm sold out for God. Any of you in the hearing of my voice who do not know this miracle working God, I encourage you, get to know him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you seek him with all your heart, you will get to find him. I encourage you, seek him today with all your hearts.